My guest has seen the Shekhinah glory of God that was on Moses show up at his meetings, and 50,000 Muslims instantly came to know Jesus. Next. Welcome, Holy Spirit. You are our most invited guest. Last month, my guest, Jeremy Nelson, came back from a meeting where God's glory was so manifest, His presence so apparent, God showed up, and if He did not have a clear word from God, it would have become a complete disaster. Jeremy, what happened? Well, we were in Malawi, Africa, doing a healing festival with about 80,000 people, most of them Muslims. And uh, anyway, I got up to speak, and when I got up, it was like the heavens open. All these angels began to come down, and the Holy Spirit said to me, take authority over witchcraft. And as I got up, it was interesting because there was this tree that was on the side of the stage, and there was this bird, a crow that was up there, and he was cawing away. And as I took authority over the witchcraft, and I said the name of Jesus, Listen, this crow morphed into a man, fell out of the tree, and the man was naked and ran off into uh, the woods. And, and what's wild about that is that there are shape-shifting witch doctors in that region, and most people were terrified of them. But because the Lord knocked that guy out of that shape-shifting appearance, over 50,000 Muslims gave their lives to Jesus that night. But, but you know what, Jeremy? If the power had not been so strong, he could have sat there cursing the whole meeting and slowed um, down your progress. Not stopped it, but slowed it down. But because God said, no, 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 <laughs> he fell out of the tree. Don't be a coconut and fall out of a tree. No, Jesus. <laughs> um, so Jeremy did not grow up in a Christian home but one day saw a verifiable physical miracle happen to his own mother. What did you see? Yeah, so, you know, my family's introduction to Jesus was when I was 13 years old, and my mother got breast cancer, and it was bad, lost all of her hair. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. chemotherapy wasn't working. Uh, my cousins and family were preparing me, and my brother saying, your mother might die. Like, you guys need to be prepared. And one day a lady gave my mother a Bible. She opened it up. She read about blind Bartimaeus, and she saw that God healed him. And so in her bedroom all alone when no one was around, she just said, you know, God, if you're really real and you healed this guy Bartimaeus, would you heal me? And as she cried out to God, Jesus, in an open vision, walked into her room, and the hand of God touched her, and she was instantly healed of cancer. And you saw all this occur. Yeah, I, I saw my mom go from death to life, being bald and having, uh, you know, her hair gone and drained of energy to all of a sudden now she was the Jesus freak. But at 16, what'd you do with the family car? Well, you know, <laughs> 16, I uh, uh, stole my dad's Corvette when they went out of town, <laughs> took it for a joy ride with a couple friends of mine. And the problem was I wasn't used to that kind of horsepower. And so I ended up driving it right off the road at about 50 miles an hour and, you know, said I wasn't even wearing my seatbelt. I got ejected out of the car. And what's wild is I watched in slow motion the car fly over me, and as I was about to hit the ground, I was flying, I saw five flashes of light, boom, 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 and it was the angels of God, and I did a somersault roll, and all I got was a little tiny cut, like right here on my shoulder, and that was it. And you know, Psalm 34, 7 says, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and I believe, even though I wasn't saved yet, but because my mom, the Jesus freak, was saved. I believe God protected my life. Okay, you're at junior college, you're home for a break, uh, you're drinking, take me. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, uh, I was living the lifestyle of partying and Drugs. just 
drugs and a lot of stuff that people would do in college. And uh, I went home for just a break, you know, in between Christmas. And when I was at home, I, I kind of just hit rock bottom with everything. You know, I was tired of getting drunk, tired of chasing women, tired of all the stuff that everybody said would make you happy, but there was no peace or happiness in it. You felt more empty afterwards. And so, you know, it was amazing. I, I actually ended up giving my life to Jesus, you know, on that trip. I went to my bedroom. I didn't know how to get saved. You, you think your mom might have gone in and put hands on the pillow, anointed it with oil a little? She may have. And, and you know, my, my salvation prayer was, OK, Lord, here I am. And as hard as I've ran into darkness, uh, I'm not going to be like the hypocrites that say they love you and they're living, you know, just like the world. I said, so as long as hard as I've ran into darkness, I'm going to run the light. So come into my life. And that was it. And I woke up the next day and I was on fire. I was reading the Word of God for five hours a day. And five hours I mean, a day. I mean, I was spending time with the Lord in the limited capacity I understood. And so it was amazing. And a month later, you go to one of my good friends, Heidi Baker's meeting. Yes. What happened? I got radically changed. You know, I, I actually went to the call in San Francisco. It's a big prayer gathering with about 40,000 young people that were there fasting and praying for uh, America. Hey, 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 Jeremy. The presence of God just really descended it strong is. right now. Yeah. But so be alert. God wants you to do something. But go ahead. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, I was in this meeting, never seen the manifestations of the Holy Ghost. And this woman, Heidi Baker, comes up to speak. And she starts speaking. And of course, in Mama Heidi fashion, you know, she goes down on the ground and starts praying. And here was her prayer. If you want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, then hit your knees. And then when I got down on my knees, she began to pray, Holy Spirit, blow. And that was her prayer for about 70 times. And as she began to pray, Holy Spirit, blow, these winds started coming. And before I knew it, I felt fire all over my body and I got baptized. Stop. I want to know what you mean. I felt fires. A lot of people don't relate to what you mean. What do you mean? I literally felt like I was on fire, like I'm I could stop, drop and roll on fire, you know, and, uh, and and it lasted. I started to shake and I started to, to tremble under the power of God. It lasted three days. And my, my, my pastor goodness. that brought me in, and, and even in my college classes, I'm sitting in my school classes and I'm shaking and the, the teacher goes, what's wrong with you? And I was, I was so scared. I didn't know what to tell her. So I said, I got a fever. <laughs> and, 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 and they said, go home. And, and when I went to my pastor, I said, pastor, what did you do to me? What happened? And all he did was lay his hands on me and go more. <laughs> and after a couple of days of that, I realized God had done an amazing baptism in the spirit. My eyes opened to the spirit. I began to have dreams. I began to have visions. I began to see physical miracles. I'd pray for people that get touched by God. And that was the beginning for me. So in other words, when you had such an encounter with the presence of God, you were able to do what the Bible says rather than read just what the Bible says. That's exactly right. One, one quick miracle that happened in the early days. You know, in the early days, the very first person that I prayed for, and this is amazing, when I got an opportunity to share at a church, I'd seen many miracles and healings in the streets, but the first person I ever prayed for had AIDS, full-blown AIDS, and when we laid hands on them, we prayed for them, they went back to the doctors, and they had a clear bill of health. Wow. Yeah. God gave Jeremy on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur this year, prophetic words that prove God is about to bless you beyond your wildest imagination. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. I want to share with you my exclusive CD, Walking in the Revelation Gifts. What are the revelation gifts? They're the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and the discerning of spirits. And when you have those gifts in operation in your life, there is a prophetic anointing that you walk in and you can access heaven with. There's three groups of gifts that are mentioned. It's the power gifts, which are the gifts of healing, faith, and the working of miracles. Utterance gifts, which are tongues and interpretations. But then there's the revelation gifts, which are the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and the discerning of spirits. And when you have those three gifts in 
operation. There is a mature realm of revelation that will rest on your life. You're going to learn how to access that realm. You're going to learn how to receive supernatural information from the Father so that you can communicate His heart on the earth. You're going to learn how to receive words of wisdom. God wants to teach us how to tap in to that full spectrum intimacy with God to where we see and we hear and we know things that have gone on with people or places and also things that are to come. Now the discerning of spirits enables you to be able to see or to hear or to feel and it will operate in different ways. It's a vehicle to get revelation to you. It could be in a dream, a vision, a trance, the audible voice of God. The discerning of spirits gift is something that opens up the realm of the spirit. You can discern what's going on between the God realm and even the demonic realm. And as you discern those things, God will give you supernatural information so that you can help people. If someone's bound in darkness and sickness and disease, you can get a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom. And through the discerning of spirits, you can understand what exactly is attacking them and you can bind it and then you can loose heaven and see the breakthrough. See, these are the kinds of things God wants to release. God wants to give you revelation concerning your business, concerning your family, concerning your calling and your ministry. This teaching CD, it's going to train you in how to walk in all of that. Start accessing the heavenly realm and learn to operate in the anointing of the revelation gifts. Just call or go online at sidroth.org 9965 and make your donation of $15 to get Jeremy's brand new exclusive audio CD, Walking in the Revelation Gifts. Then choose to receive your CD by mail with shipping and handling included or choose the digital download option. Do you feel as if God's not listening when you pray or speaking back to you? I've been there and so have all of my guests. That's why I want you to go to SidRoth.org slash prayer to access interviews with guests who have discovered how to pray unstoppable prayers. Learn about our free prayer app called God Talk and leave a prayer request so we can pray for you. It's more than time for your breakthrough. We now return to It's Supernatural. Now, my guest, Jeremy Nelson, uh, for some reason, God speaks to him on biblical holidays. For instance, what did God show you on Rosh Hashanah? Yeah, on Rosh Hashanah, I was in Zimbabwe. We were doing some outreaches there, and, you know, it was interesting. I was praying in the car. And as I was praying in the car, waiting for our team, they were doing street evangelism and going places. Uh, after about 45 minutes, the whole car filled with light. And it was like everything disappeared. And all of a sudden, I could hear the angels of God praising the king. And then I saw Jesus step out of a cloud. And he came up to me and walked up to me in this experience and handed me a scroll. And when I looked at the scroll, I opened and... It was Isaiah chapter 60. It said, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And as I had this encounter, the Lord began to speak to me. And he said, Jeremy, the next season for the church and even in the world is going to be a season of greater glory. He said, it's going to be a season of Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60 says, arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. When deep darkness covers the earth and the people, God's glory will be seen upon the church. And as God spoke this to me, he said, get ready. There's about to be a greater dimension of the Kabod glory, which is the weight of God's presence. And he said, there's also going to be the Shekinah glory, which is the visible splendor of God. It's the miracles of God, the signs and wonders of God. And one of the things he told me is, get ready. You're about to see revival that is uh, coming forth out of riots. He said, there'll be riots to revival and demonstrations to reformations. And that there's going to be a tension between gross darkness, but at the same time, powerful glory and powerful encounters from the Lord. You know, one thing I find is when people bump into the glory of God, it's happening more and more often now to many believers that are friends of ours. Uh, there's something that seems to be uh, accompanying it. And I'm wondering if this happened to you. It's something called a, a, a tangible fear of God a company with the glory. Did this happen to you? Absolutely. And, you know, oftentimes, Sid, when I have encounters, especially with the Lord, 
The fear of the Lord comes so what strong. What does that mean, fear of the Lord? You though? know, I, I think it's, you know, a worshipful awe of who he is. Oh. But also, it's the knowledge of the fact that he's God and we're not. And when he shows up, listen, the majesty of heaven shows up. And your physical flesh sometimes can't handle it. And I literally find myself shaking under the power at times. In fact, I can feel this coming through the, the screen right now. Listen, if you want an encounter with the fear of the Lord, those of you that are in this audio uh, audience and those of you watching, listen, we release right now the supernatural realm of visitation. We thank you, Lord, that many others are going to encounter Jesus and the King and that, Lord, you would mark a generation with the fear of the Lord that would unlock a greater dimension of your glory and your power. Yes, Lord. Now. The most holy day in our, my Jewish calendar is Yom Kippur, yep. Day of Atonement. What did God show you on Yom Kippur? On Yom Kippur, I was preaching at the Fire and Glory Outpouring in San Diego, the revival that we've been hosting for around eight years. And as I was preaching, we had given an altar call. And when I was speaking, all of a sudden I went to an open vision. It's like the, the roof of the building disappeared. And I saw coming out of heaven thousands of angels. And these angels were all carrying mantles from the throne of God. And these mantles were very interesting. Uh, they, for those that don't know what a mantle is, what is a mantle? So, the, so a mantle signifies uh, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that would rest on someone or a grace a that has been purpose. given by God for a specific purpose or task. And so I saw these mantles that were being released from the throne and on the outside of the mantles were blueprints. And on the inside of the mantle, there was a scripture. It was John 5, 19. Now that scripture is where Jesus prayed for the man at the pool of Bethesda who got healed. And the Pharisees said, by whose authority do you do these miracles in John 5, 19? He said, I only do what I see my father doing. And so I believe what these mantles are is a grace that's about to come on the church because this tension that we were just talking about between darkness and light, between wars and crazy things that are happening, protests and even revivals and reformation that wants to break out, we are going to need divine intelligence. We're going to need strategies. We're going to need blueprints from heaven. We're going to need to hear the voice of the Father because as we do, it's going to usher in what God wants to release. And that's what these mantles are for that God is releasing in this hour that he showed me on Rosh Hashanah. Now, one of the things you brought out, and I want you to do that right now, is those that have relied on the old ways will find they're not going to work. You need the yep. new for the new. That's right. We're, we're not going back to pre-COVID days, and we're not going back to what it was. In fact, we're in a season now where there's a greater glory. There's going to be more manifestations of God's power, His presence, resurrections. We've seen over eight people resurrected from the dead in the last year. And it's part of that new wave of revival and glory that's coming. After all these visitations you've had, Things have changed in your life. It's like the Bible says you go from glory to glory. You were in uh, Pakistan. Um, and uh, you know what? I want you to see, uh, how long ago was this, Jeremy? Two weekends ago. Two weekends ago. See what happened two weeks ago in Pakistan. These are mostly Muslims, would you say? Yeah. Okay, let's take a look. Amen. <laughs> okay. Jeremy, how many people would you say received the Lord just then? Well, over that week, we saw over a million decisions for Christ in those campaigns. Now, you tell me we're not in the last days. And I'll tell you what, time is running short. Your time, my time, Jeremy's time, the world's time. But I said, your time, 
I want you to repeat this prayer. Mean it to the best of your ability. The whole reason you're watching this show is to make Jesus not just your Savior, but your Savior and Lord. Repeat after me out loud. Dear God, I've made many mistakes for which I'm so sorry. I believe the blood of Jesus washes away all my mistakes. And I'm clean. It's so good to be clean. Jeremy, I want you to pray what God wants you to pray for all the people that said that prayer previously or said it right now. And even you that didn't say it, you're going to get zapped. Go ahead. Come on, Father, I just thank you that in this season of greater glory, that Lord, you would release that kabod, the weight of your presence to people, that you'd release the visible splendor of God, miracles, signs and wonders. And Lord, I thank you for the divine intelligence, for the wisdom, Lord, for those mantles that you showed me that you want to release on the earth so that there would be a a revival that cannot be stopped that would happen. Lord, release that now over everyone in this room and watching this online in Jesus' mighty name. And you know, there are many people watching right now, and you write about this, uh, words of knowledge, yes. words of wisdom. Exactly. What's the difference between those two? Well, a word of knowledge is past tense. So it's something that's already happened or is happening. And so, you know, it can have to do with a place or a person, uh, but words of wisdom are future tense, which means that when you get a word of knowledge, don't stop there. You got supernatural information that gets people's attention, but we need to also call forth that which is not as if it's prophecy. Now you do this quite often. Can I get you to press into the spirit and pray as God tells you. Yes. Right now. Yeah. So Father, we just thank you for words of knowledge, words of wisdom. Listen, right now I see eyesight being restored. Cataracts are being dissolved. God is doing miracles where there's been blindness and even blurred vision, sunspots. God is healing that. And I also see the Lord is healing lungs right now. Some that have been dealing with long COVID, uh, all the issue of the fluid in the lungs be healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. What, what should someone do that's watching it in the studio audience or on television and say, that's me? What the, should their reaction be to have it manifest? Well, I think you just say, I take it, you know, and. and you mean, that's it's that simple. Yeah, I take it. I yeah. like it. I take it. Any of you take it? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Jeremy, not only do you work in words of wisdom and words of knowledge at mass meetings, but you're a prophet. You know, th I mean, we had lunch yesterday and you looked at someone and you literally, as they say, read their mail. I mean, there's just, and then he goes back to eat his lunch. But, uh, but it was almost natural for you. What do you see coming to the world? You know, what I see is I see the clashing between light and darkness. And especially in, you know, the United States and then even in the West, I believe that even though there's turbulent times, there's all these riots, there's all these protests, there's all these demonstrations and all the talk of war and everything that's happening. I think God is setting the stage for one of the greatest revivals that we've ever seen. Uh, I remember having an open vision where I saw the throne of God. Jesus was on the throne and I was standing next to the throne and I could look down from the mountain of God and I saw a valley filled with people and they were all being led astray by a, a spirit of deception. Hmm. And as they're being led astray, they're being led to a cliff and people were falling off into hell. But in a moment of time, uh, Jesus uh, let out a shout and all of a sudden hearts began to change. And I knew that it was talking about the book of Joel, the valley of decision, that many are in the valley of decision and that the Lord was going to release a clarion call to a generation and that many would be set free from deception, from lies, and that there would be a revival that would happen that would cause people to turn away from the darkness and come to the light. And where they had previously been led away by uh, doctrines of demons being political agendas or sexual confusion or uh, even, uh, you know, uh, this thing and that thing, the Lord was going to release such a move of his voice and his heart that we were going to see a generation turn. And I believe that is about to happen. Yeah, you know, he, what you, you, sp you spoke about a spirit of deception. And the only thing to counteract a spirit of deception is the Holy Spirit. That's right. We are so blessed. We that know the Messiah, 
and have said, welcome, Holy Spirit. I need you more than ever. We're going to have a presence all around us as individuals. It'll be almost like a, a field around us that nothing, no weapon formed against us can prosper. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. If you will believe, if you will believe that, that field of God's presence, His glory, His goodness is surrounding you right now, and you should be aware of that, that you are protected by the Most High God.